<clears throat> Hold on. This is Cody Wilson, also known as Magnus Core. Um, 2015. Um, here and there, I've made. Um, well, I made this little short story, and I made some prose and poetry. Not much, though. But it'll be a follow-up video to my 2014 video, so I'm just putting it in there again. Yeah, I'll start with mm. by the way I'm glad you're watching. Um, the Jester of Aaron Fair Hero I'm sorry. The Jester of Aaron Fair Hill Aaron Fair. Aaron Fair, yes. There once was born a baron who lived in filth. He abused his family and treated everything with tits with respect, no matter the circumstances. He had read about the chivalry. He had read about chivalry in old books that passed through his keep on the back of horses and in the libraries of the castle. In his true nature, it was not a bad idea, but he corrupted this and spat on the idea by living it in a very wrong manner. If the world knew what he was, they would flay him alive and light their torches and set him on fire. I will tell you of the gesture of Aaron Fairhill this day. I am Ricardo Aaron Fair the Third, and this gesture I speak of is Ricardo Aaron Fair the Second, my uncle. He is Baron of the Keep, a title of my grandfather, the steward gave him once he had been arrested for selling illegal goods in the darkest places of the, of the town. No, it was to a whore, be it a haggy wench, his favorite and only interest in girls. My grandfather is a fool for doing this. He should flog him and throw him onto the streets. The streets have the saints according to him. The perspective of the jester is that all people who do wrong and are punished are being punished wrongfully, because he himself is evil. Let me explain. I lost my place. <laughs> oh, the jester likes to rant and rave about how backwards the world is, when it is he himself who is backwards. It was a drug called Swill manufactured by men in the farthest empires that addled his brain. Now he only thinks in a serious jest because it lowered his already low intellect into something even smaller. He has singled me out. I am to be king and this trash thinks himself better than me. I am Prince Ricardo the third of the Aaron Fair family. So be it. This man's story must continue. He fancies criminals and makes him daydream and make belief like a child that he is somehow part of some grand conspiracy. I'm sure he often imagines himself as the leader of the prison hags. That is not the interesting part of the story, but I am getting to it. Every day he struts about the keep as if he is waiting on something. Perhaps one day the prisoners in the dungeon will escape and proclaim him king. Until that day, this filthy prison is enough for me. One day I confronted him about the drug he indulged on that made him so retarded and slow and angry for no reason, and he has held a grudge ever since. I told people many times he is dangerous and does not deserve to be barren of Aaron for a keep. My uncle, being the chivalrous man that he was, kept contact with the one that introduced him to the so-called Society of Innocence branded thieves and brigands. She still haunts him to this day, but she has tits, so it will always be that she will take advantage of his chivalry. It is alright to kick dust in your family's face, unless she has tits. Then it is a chivalrous crime. The jester, ah yes, he is now a jester of the keep. Let me explain. 
I had just helped the maid wash dishes and noticed the knife had been had been washed. When she left it, when she left, I threw it down and hatched a very elaborate plan to have him taken away for good. I grew tired of the stress he caused us for no good reason, worshipping his criminal gods and goddesses. I told the guard to run to the castle, run, you know, run to the castle, which was very close, and rally the men, for he had grabbed me by the hair and held a knife behind me to the front of my neck because I confronted him on his silly, his silly, if not jester-like ideas and notions. He didn't, but the ends justify the means. Ricardo II was sleeping when the guard stabbed him, but missed, grazing his finger. Blood went out. I thought it was, it would be a vomit as black fluid or oil, and he surrendered. In the original plan, I had planned not to press charges, but as I stood there, I just did not know. Should I? He was already let loose, and a new infraction would bring him to the dungeons. Me and my wit soon thought something up, new up, new up. I told everyone to make him the jester of the household permanently, and he would not have to hold quarter with his heroes in the dungeons. Now he dances for us, day and night, rain, and rain or shine. In the throne room, the jester of Aaron Fair gets tomatoes thrown at him, and he thanks the thrower, for they are innocent. Yeba deba dee he says, as those who can do no wrong and have tits slap him for being the jester. When I am king, I will further this to a massive degree and decree that this jester be brought to my throne to dance for eternity. Bit of a short story there. Funny history behind that. It's based on a person I actually know. And uh, he's a terrible person. But mm, he's family, so. And that actually happened. Okay. So. Let's see. Bit of a little bit of like a prose quote, maybe. Humanity is such a simple thing surrounded by something greater. There is more to this world than seems at first. Trust in this or at least trust that it is possible. If what you see is what you get, then surely life is not worth living. Spell me. This is pretty contrived. Pretty redundant too. It's not really prose or poetry, it's just a post. Okay, now I'll just skip that. Okay, I wrote this on my birthday this year. This is February 25th, 2015. I was really depressed at that time, despite it being my birthday. It's just ironic that I write this on my birthday of all days. It's called Extolling a Worthless Life, which I later changed to Extolling Reasons. Just simplified the name. In your serpentine bid for time, carried away a wings of decay, set up shop on scabbed, defeated hawks, set anew the flawed view, never going to when this army has been inverted. All other times I feel averted. Can you hear them? They hate you and me. Time clash. Time clash. Axes, swords, weapons of mass aversion, hopeless. Decay of mind, severed days. Cannot stop the worthless hope. The hope decay. Every day is a new way to pay. With everything you count as sane, bid for time carried away on scattered wings of so much decay. Set up your shops on defeated wings. Time moves on, life's decay. Hopelessness, 
I feel them chaining. Life decay. I see them. Torture. Vexing new hours of madness to view. As many new parts are not really a part of you. Deities laughing as their minions chain you to shadows. Barking wolves are ends to pay. <laughs> Helpless. Our mind, I, our mind decay. I start to feel us all fade away. Set up shop on the river sticks. There are so many things I care not to fix. Hopeless, helpless, finding wretched thrown in fires. Desire in spines of ever spiteful wire. Into voids unknown, we shoot for glory. This worthless, wretched amount of worry. Vindication. And it's called extolling a worthless life or extolling reasons. See. There's one more prose, kind of a lore prose about my upcoming book if I write it. I've already written Tempest. But I had planned a whole lot of uh, story to the plot, the characters, what happened, you know all the stuff that happens in the book. If it, if I write it, which it would be, even if I did, it would probably change quite a bit, so. But that was, I already have the general plot, so, yeah. But I probably, I may not even write a book. I just, because Tempest kind of, um, but, there's more to tell, pretty much. Anyway, kind of rambling on here. Sorry about that. Um, this is called the Silent Ones, and it's about Mistraga leading the, the Silent Ones, which are at the end of my book, and they're not very. They're not explained very much. Okay. Sorry. Born of ritual haste and thrown in fire, reborn as the Silent Ones. They always feel the presence of Movak, the unquenchable in pursuer, destined for great things, but dragging their heels always. When silent, they summon the powers of the dragons to stalk their foes and enter their dreams. The lesser god of prophetic dreams of the past and nature, Everdeen has chosen them to oppose the order of the serpent, for their roots lie in a pact between Movak and Darkin many long centuries ago in the infancy of a mysteriously reformed society. Mistraga the succubus leads the new order, once called the Silent Ones, now called the Chosen. As fate would have it, they are indeed chosen, both of Everteen and of the Tides of Destiny. A short little prose there, and uh, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Not very much, but it counts, I guess. Okay, thanks for watching. Let's see, uh, top monitor there. Goodbye.